So let's talk about this with B cell and B cell activation. So we have in B cells something slightly different. Why? Because B cells are also antigen presenting cells. So with B cells, we're gonna have these cells way over here, make it a little bit bigger. And with B cells, they're gonna have an antibody. It looks like a Y, it's got two binding sites, right? This antibody is the B cell receptor. And it recognizes, let's say, epitope A from varicella. What happens? Because it's a B cell receptor, or it's got a, because it's a antigen presenting cell, it also has, I think I made it in green, so I'm gonna make this in green. It also has MHC2 on there. The MHC2, remember, MHC2 displays epitopes that are foreign, that you picked up from a virus, killed the virus, and now you display the epitope. Now, what makes the MHC2 in a B cell, and I should write B cell, the MHC2 from the B cell is different than the MHC2 from the macrophage. How do, what do I mean by this? The MHC2 in the macrophage, the macrophage will swallow up the virus, and every single epitope on that virus is displayed on different MHC2s. Perfect, now you have a lot of MHC2s, right? And a lot of different epitopes, lots of helper T cells can become activated just from that one macrophage, right? That's very efficient. This is kind of different for B cells. B cells will only display epitope A, and that's it. So what happens? What do I mean by this, All right? With a B cell, a B cell is right here, and the B cell, so here's varicella zoster virus. Here's that epitope A from varicella zoster virus. What happens? If there is an epitope A, this epitope A binds to the antibody receptor, and The virus then is brought in. The virus then is brought into the B cell. Then it's destroyed. As it's destroyed, the same epitope that allowed it to be brought in is then going to be placed on our MHC2. So now we have that specificity, right? Now, if you have a different virus, if you have, instead of varicella zoster, which is chickenpox, you have the influenza virus. And the influenza virus, right, has a different epitope that doesn't match. What happens? Doesn't bind to it. Doesn't bind to the receptor. You don't bring it in, you don't kill it, you don't display it. So unlike a macrophage that kind of binds and swallows all the viruses, B cells only brings a virus in and kills it if it has an epitope that matches its B cell receptor, right? Once it does, it binds to it, brings it in, then it displays that same epitope that allowed that virus to be brought in, right? It displays it on its MHC2 receptor. So the big difference between a macrophage and how it presents an antigen and a B cell and how it presents is this. B cells only present a specific epitope, the same epitope that allowed it to bring the virus or bacterium in. That's the only epitope that it's gonna display on its MHC2. Mac macrophages will display all the different epitopes on all the different MHC2 molecules. This one only shows epitope A, that's it. That's the only epitope it will display. Now, once it kills it and displays it, it's not active yet, which is crazy, right? Once it kills it and displays it, it needs a little bit of help. 
Where does the help come in? It, helper T cells right here. Right? So helper T cells are going to come around and helper T cells are going to come around and it's going to have a T cell receptor. And that helper T cell receptor should match right here the epitope that's displayed on MHC2. So this is MHC2, helper T cell CD4. Does my rule of eights match? Yeah, right? MHC2, two times four, eight, right? So what happens? Well, what happens is this. Because it matches, the helper T cell then will release interleukin again. Once interleukin is released, Once interleukins release, the combination of displayed epitope, T cell recognition, interleukin two, that whole that whole I mean there's other ones as well, but these co-stimulation allows me then to activate this B cell. This B cell is going to start producing, right? First of all, it's going to have still this receptor that recognizes A, what it's going to do is once active, it forms clones of itself. Some of the clones, some of the clones turns into memory B cells for later infections. Some of the clones starts producing antibodies. And those antibodies are all specific for Epitope A, the same epitope that allowed you to bring that virus in in the first place. All right? Now, these cells turn from being called a B cell to being called a plasma cell. So a plasma cell is actually the cell that produces antibodies. Sounds like a test question, right? Just because it's so specific. Plasma cells produce antibodies they're activated versions of B cells. The B cells themselves are inactive. Once they turn into plasma cells, that's when they start producing antibodies. And the antibodies they produce are for the same epitope, all for epitope A. In other words, these B cells, they can only produce antibodies for that same epitope. They're not, even though there's thousands of different epitopes on a virus, the other 99% of the epitopes, well, he's not worried about it. He's only worried about the one epitope that allowed that virus to enter, right? The one epitope, epitope A, then will they make antibodies for epitope A. Those antibodies then will start to attach itself to viruses that have epitope A. So you have a virus over here, it's got epitope A sticking out, those antibodies will attach to it and neutralize it, making it harder for that virus to enter other cells. Because to be honest, if a virus doesn't enter a cell and infects you, it really doesn't do much, right? It's just floating around. It's not even alive. It's not even able to replicate. So as long as we can make sure it doesn't get into your cell, we're okay. It's if it gets into your cell, then we have an issue because now it's able to take over our machinery and reproduce, right? By acting, by binding with the antibody, you can neutralize that going into the cell. Any questions so far about this? Tons, right? So 